We are here at the TI booth at Embedded World 2024, and what I have behind me is actually two separate projects in one, both of which are very exciting for different reasons. Uh, we're going to begin by talking about the power side of this. This is an inverter, but it's an inverter that works a slightly different way to what you may have come across before. It's very agnostic about its power source. Um, so I'm here with Harold, who's going to tell me a little bit more about the input power side of this system. Um, what is it about this that makes it so special? Thank you, Ian. So, what it makes it really special about this uh, design is this is not a conventional microinverter that goes on the roof and just works from the panel to the grid. This is a microinverter which is a hybrid configuration. You can you can configure it with panels. Actually, this reference design has the ability that we can connect up to four PV panels. It can be reconfigured that you use instead of a panel a 48 volt battery as a storage system. So you could directly charge energy from the sun into the battery, into the 48 volt battery, and use it when there is more excess energy needed on the AC side. So what is really unique about that one, it can be configured on the panel side, up to four batteries or up to four panels, and the maximum power you can drain into the, into the grid. It's 1600 watt, which is quite remarkable, and opens a lot of uh, different uh, application use cases like a balcony application where you just put all multiple panels on the on the balcony and have a, a solar storage system a battery storage system that can take all the excess energy and stores it and you can absorb that into the grid later on so and the output of that one is generating up to 1.6 uh, kilowatt and that could then feed some of the household equipment you have like the heat pump that we are going to talk about a little later. Absolutely, yeah. And, uh, and just before we do move on to talk about that, there was one aspect of this that we talked about before filming that was quite interesting, is that um, this is using GAN technology. And this is a term that we're hearing more and more of these days for good reason. And what are the uh, benefits of using GAN technology in something like this design? It's pretty obvious how GAN can actually impact um, the, the performance of these designs. So traditionally there were silicon, uh, standard silicon MOSFETs being used in that. They have uh, problems with the uh, limited ability of getting the conduction losses and the switching losses down. So in other words, this is a design that has uh, less efficiency. So you want to get from the 400 watt panel you have, you want to get the maximum out. So and if you think about you're wasting 5% of the energy, that means this is nothing you can absorb later on. So these uh, using gun technology, wide band gap devices, allows you to basically get into efficiency ranges which are 98, 99% efficient. So this means you're not wasting a lot of energy into your converter. You get everything the sun is giving you into the battery for storage and vice versa, once you get the energy out from the battery, you want to have as little, at, as least uh, losses as possible. So that's important why you use gun here. And the second thing is, uh, going to a wide band gap device, uh, you can switch at much faster switching frequencies. In other words, you can operate not at 10 kilohertz, you can operate converters at 100 kilohertz, 200 kilohertz, we are operating this one even at 500 kilohertz, which means 500 kilohertz, all the magnetic components that are needed in a power converter can get much smaller. And this is why the power density of that design is unprecedented. We achieve a one kilowatt per liter for a microinverter, which is unprecedented. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. Wild, yeah. Uh, I mean, that, there's so many reasons why that's already very exciting, but I mean, once you have a fairly agnostic power source, which is incredibly efficient, you need something to do with it. And that's why we're going to move on now to talk to Giovanni about the HVAC system that this is connected to. Do you want to head up? Yeah, and maybe if we can switch to the heat pump demo. Let me see. I hope you know. Yeah. So yeah, until now we've been talking, right, my colleague I have talked about how we generate energy, right, in a green way uh, through solar panels or solar energy, but how we're going to use that energy in an efficient way, right? A heat pump is uh, one of the solutions, right? If you want to heat or cool your place, heat pump, you know, is the right um, product that, you know, they allow to you to do, to do that. So you can reduce, you know, your carbon footprint, but you can also reduce, you know, at the end of the day, your energy bill right um, as you just make it more efficient and you know in order to do that actually you know the heat pump is made of uh, 
different um, subsystems. So as you can see from the screen, you know, you have the compressor, you have a fan, you have uh, some uh, expansion valves, right? You have um, uh, some uh, water pump. So in this case, I'm showing actually the inverter stage, right? So this is uh, uh, going to be the board that is going to uh, drive your compressor, your uh, 1.5 kilowatt compressor. And it's going to be also the board that is going to drive, you know, your fan. In addition, you know, to have uh, the digital controller, uh, the digital power controlling. And we do all of that, you know, with, the, with only one device. So here we're using our C2000 uh, chip, which, you know, is able to, um, to basically yeah, run uh, or drive the compressor, the fan, as I said, and um, uh, the digital power, uh, only with one device. So this is a, a variable frequency um, controller. So efficiency is going to be pretty high. We're talking more than 90% efficiency. And that's only one part, right, of the entire system. Then, you know, if we move uh, to the position sensing or to the, of the device, right, to control the valve, here, you know, our, uh, we're using um, some of our steppers uh, device and the BLDC devices. And we're using, you know, the innovation here, uh, when it comes, we're using also a position sensor, a 3D all sensor, which uh, detect, you know, the position of your damper of your valve. So let's say if your valve is stuck or your damper is stuck, you're going to detect that uh, so you know that you're not pumping, you know, uh, too much air or water in your system, right? So to not waste energy. And then, you know, we also have, uh, uh, you will need in your system a water pump, especially in Europe where you have air to water uh, heat pumps, right? That we go, for example, in your floor or underneath your floor, right? Uh, to, to heat your place. And here we're using, uh, for example, we have partnered with Grunfos, uh, water pump uh, manufacturer. And actually this pump also contains a um, connectivity device, which is the other part of the demo. So basically you can monitor through your app, you know, what is, you know, the energy that you're using or where the energy comes from, what is, you know, also you can manage uh, where you're, when you're going to use that energy uh, during the day, right? Uh, because there are part of the day where, you know, your energy costs less and that's, you know, when you want to use it uh, more. So again, to reduce your energy bill. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. And, um, and I should point out as well that this pump is something that we were hoping to see today, but as is the nature of conferences, it hasn't quite arrived on time. You may be seeing video footage of it on the screen right now or not. But one thing that is for sure is that the one guiding thing that seems to be coming up time and time again is efficiency in devices and the ability to be able to monitor them. And this, these two projects in one show that the efficiency levels of things are getting to a point where it is incredible. You heard before, 98 to 99% efficiency in something is unprecedented. And these have been two very interesting things to see. Uh, Harold Giovanni, thank you so very much for your time today. Thanks,